This is Echo 3, and let's discuss making a very basic helicopter using the breaking ground parts. Personally, I would suggest making a coaxial style helicopter if this is your first attempt, but it seems most people want to know how to make the main rotor tail rotor style. I do have several other tutorials on how to make helicopters and other types of vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that you may be interested in. I'm going to show you the absolute basics of how to make a functional design that you can then build off of. By the way, I'd love to see what you end up making, so if you could share pictures or share stories in the comments about how your designs end up working. We can build off the probe core rather easily. I'll put a command share on it and then some grip pads on the bottom. We can add a few structural pieces to help provide the skeleton of the craft. With the basic shape assembled, we can start adding practical things like power. This is going to be an electrically powered helicopter, so we're going to use batteries and a solar panel. RTGs would also work well, but you may want to power yours with liquid fuel. If you do use a liquid fuel design, keep your fuel balanced so that as fuel drains, the center of mass doesn't shift. The solar panel here, it'll just kind of act like a little roof on our design. Nothing too special, just make sure it can get power and isn't blocked by anything. Now I'm going to put a fan shroud and attach this to the back. This will be the attachment point for the tail rotor. It can also be helpful to protect the blades. Say if we were to accidentally hit the back of the helicopter as we try to land. If you watch until the end, you can see how that turns out. Now this design, I'm going to make use of the Cal 1000. You can use action groups and set up yours in such a way that you wouldn't need it, but I'm going to demonstrate this approach that I find works the best. Next, we can add the rotors. Please watch carefully how I set these up. The main rotor is going to have three attachment points and the size is going to be reduced to just 40%. You don't have to reduce the size, but this will reduce the power consumption and the weight as well. For the time being, I have copied the main rotor and in the action groups, I am binding the rotor power to the RCS key. This will mean that I can turn on and off the motors simply by pressing the RCS action group. A little extra time spent in the hangar setting up action groups can result in an easier time controlling the craft. The second motor will be our tail rotor. It needs even less power, so I'm reducing its size to just 10%. Then I'll place it in the fan shroud. With our motors placed, we can then add the blades. I'm going to be using the fan blades, but you could use the other blades. This will just depend on the needs of your design. Big fan blades will be on the main rotor and little ones on the tail rotor. Now, please watch carefully how I set these up. I have the blades deployed and I'm starting their deployment angle to just zero. Please notice too that the blades are parallel to their respective motors. The tail rotor is set to have 10 degrees of control authority and will control roll and yaw. The main rotor has 5 degrees of control authority and is set to control pitch and roll. With SAS on, the craft will be stable even without reaction wheels, but that's something you may want to add in your design. Finally, we need to set up the main rotor. Its deployment angle will be controlled by the Cal 1000 with the Cal play position being bound to the main throttle. I think console versions of the game use some different terminology, but the basics are the same. The play position is set to go from 0 to 12 degrees. This will give us a more fine control over the lift produced by the main rotor. Now we're going to look at the center of lift produced by the main rotors, and we can see how it is not lined up with the center of mass. We need to adjust the parts to get those to be lined up to have a stable craft. And I think we're going to be in pretty good shape here. We'll just move some parts around. Nothing too critical here. But I want my center of lift to be basically directly over the center of mass. If anything, the center of mass should be slightly ahead. But for the most part, practically, I just want these things to be lined up. Now, let's put Jeb in the cockpit. And we'll just adjust one thing here. And let's test this thing out. We're going to turn SAS on to keep the craft stable, and RCS will turn on the rotors. We can increase the throttle, and this will take off. If you have found this tutorial helpful, remember to activate the like button and subscribe to this channel. 
There are not reaction wheels on this helicopter, so it is entirely controlled by aerodynamics. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me to discuss the basics of helicopter design. I will see you next time.